where are you investing? We can choose to invest in the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of self. And so the aim of today's talk is to encourage you to develop discernment, to develop wisdom, and also to develop depth in your character. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of self are opposed to each other. In the book of Galatians, it says this, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, and here's the point, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. We want to do good. We want to be a blessing. We want a happy life. And yet we've got these sinful desires that war against our development. And that brings disappointment. It brings distress in our life. And ultimately it can end up bringing a depression if we're constantly at war with ourselves. So investing in the kingdom of ourself looks like this. From Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things or continually practice them like they become a habit will not inherit the kingdom of God. On the other hand, the fruit of dwelling in God, aligning yourself with him and allowing him to bring the change in you, that brings fruit. And the fruit of that spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then there's a key that says those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That means when we belong to Jesus, we discern what is good and not what is not defined by him. And we start killing off the destructive patterns and activities and actions. We do not invest our thoughts in them because our thoughts then trap our will to choose. So we do not let them enter our minds and entertain such things. We choose to turn away and dwell on the good. So you are developing character through all the trials on earth so that you be can become a trustworthy type of person for eternity. God uses all things for good for those who love him. And he's also promised not to put us through temptations without providing a way out for us. We get to choose how we're going to respond to hardships. We can either respond in the way Jesus taught us, trusting in him, or we can respond in a sinful, harmful way that ultimately destroys our character and all our relationships around us. So I'm going to encourage you today to develop discernment of the good and evil by just meditating on these uh, thoughts in Galatians 5. Remember, you become like those you associate with, even those you associate with online all the influences. And Jesus said you will recognize who is good and bad by their fruits, what comes out of their lives, what comes out of their mouths. Then we develop wisdom. Now wisdom is actually practicing what is good. It's more than just knowing what is good. It's when we start practicing it. And we also develop depth of character because we're now starting to think through what was I created for? Was I created for investing in myself? No, I was created for investing in the kingdom of God. To conclude, 
sowing to the spirit is not trying and trying and forcing oneself to be patient and loving and joyful and long-suffering and pushing oneself. Rather, it is by investing time in the things of the spirit. That means praying, getting to know God's mind on things, reading his word, intellectually thinking through issues of what is right and what is wrong according to God. It is having times of silence. It is having times of Sabbath so that we're not constantly exhausted and bombarded by everyone else's thoughts and decisions. We have to live before the audience of one and do that responsible spiritual work of sowing into the spirit. So may God bless you as you practice that. Amen.